Hello, I'm Moz and this is a review of Mate 10 and 10 Pro. Should you buy it? Watch the line for the answer. So as usual, we are going to score each category such as build quality, hardware, software, camera, display features, battery life and charging speed and lastly the company's goodwill. After giving a score to each category, we will look at our pre-made chart, either it is worthy for your money or not. So let's evaluate the build quality first. Both Mate 10 and 10 Pro have an amazing glass wrapped body. And let me tell you, it looks and feels amazing. It feels premium, it looks good and there is nothing to say, it easily gets 10 out of 10. Now, now let's talk about the hardware. It is where you're gonna see the difference between Mate 10 and 10 Pro. Let's talk about Mate 10. It comes with Kirin 970 which is an AI chip and really performs well in camera department. 4 gigs of RAM which is not enough by any means. Mali G72 MP12 GPU which is really good for Quad HD gaming and 64 gigs of storage with additional SD card support. It easily gets 9 out of 10. And Mate 10 Pro comes with the same Kirin 970 and Mali G72 MP12 GPU but with 128 gigs of storage and 6 gigs of RAM which is for me get 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about the software. Both comes with EMUI 8.0 which is based on Android 8.0 Oreo out of the box. It is the first phone comes out of the box with Oreo which is really good but icons are nowhere near to the stock Android. Yeah it also has some bloatware and let me tell you it takes a little time to get update but for me it comes with some handy features and it really gets 9 out of 10 there now let's talk about the camera both 10 and 10 pro are similar in this category let me tell you it comes with dual rear facing camera one is of 12 megapixel and the other is 20 megapixel and let me tell you both have the aperture of one f 1.6 which is which is the first ever uh, aperture of this this kind in a cell phone and one is of rgb sensor and the other is monochrome. Front facing camera is 8 megapixel f2.0 so it is really good. It is better if not best than the Note 8 and I can tell you it easily gets 9 out of 10. Now let's look into the display. It is where the things go well. Let's first talk about the Mate 10. It comes with 5.9 inch Quad HD resolution, 16 by 9 aspect ratio, IPS LCD panel which is good. Color accurate but not as bright as we would like to be honest and yeah it is HDR10 compliant so it is a overall very good display it gets 9 out of 10. Now Mate 10 Pro comes with 6 inch full HD plus resolution OLED panel which is brighter than the Mate 10's IPS LCD panel but not as sharp as the Quad HD of Mate 10. I don't know why Huawei why not Quad HD OLED panel in the Mate 10 Pro. I, I don't know <laughs> I could announce that. Yeah it is HDR10 compliant and it is okay it is it is really just good a good display and gets 8 out of 10 now let's talk about the features of may 10 it comes with headphone jack good fast charging great fingerprint sensor good wireless charging not ip53 what is this splash resistance are you insane huawei <laughs> in this 2017 you are giving us ip53 rating come on grow up SD card support is good, SDR 10 compliant, it's, it gets 7 out of 10. Now let's talk about the Mate 10 Pro's feature. No headphone jack, no wireless charging, no SD card support. But comes with fast charging, fingerprint sensor, IP67, thank god Huawei. And SDR 10 compliant display, it also gets 7 out of 10. Now let's talk about the battery life and charging speed. Both of these phones comes with 4000 mAh battery which is giant compared to those 3300 mAh of Note 8 and OnePlus 5T but let me tell you it cannot even reach at that level. It really dies before the OnePlus 5T or Note 8. Um, <laughs> It's, uh, it's just mind blowing. I don't know. Uh, optimization sucks. Perhaps it, it gets 8 out of 10. Now let's talk about the company's goodwill. Huawei is well known for manufacturing phones, let me tell you. But it doesn't have much a stake in western countries to be honest. But in Asian market it really holds a pretty good stake. Now resale value isn't good to be honest. But third party manufacturers do create a lot of accessories for this phone. So yeah it is a win win situation but not a good in resale value. So it gets 5 out of 10. Now after adding all the scores up we get 66. Oh boy it falls under the category of $600. And let me tell you they are charging $825 for Mate 10 and 
$945 for Mi 10 Pro. Now, at this price range, you can have Galaxy S8 Plus or Galaxy Note 8. And let me tell you, they have more features than these phones. They have more reliability than these phones. The company's goodwill is more than the Huawei. So, why would one will be willing to pay this much money to these phones? My verdict is don't buy this phone right now. Yeah, if it comes down in prices, go or fetch it. But right now, it is not a good deal because you have a lot of choices. as it Plus and Note 8 and I must say, they, they are just pretty down good phones. So yeah guys, this is pretty much it for the Mate 10 and 10 Pro. And I know Huawei has a lot of potential, but they are just confusing the end consumer by their naming scheme, 10 and 10 Pro, while they both are pretty much same and there is no reason to bump that much price over it. Because yeah, you are getting a full HD rather than Quad HD of Mate 10. So why? Perhaps do subscribe for more and press that bell icon for such reviews. Leave a comment down below what do you want to see next and goodbye, see ya.